All right, hope everyone's doing well. So, in the Globex, we have the Fed Bar. Let me grab my mouse real quick. There we go. Make it easier. By the way, just a just a disclaimer: I am placing trades and uh, on a different computer. But however, the the accounts are linked. Therefore, this computer is going to say order filled or something like that. I don't know how loud it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to make the video loud. So if you have headphones in, uh, be mindful of that. And let me know if it's that loud. I'll try to fix it in the future. Anyways, so in, in the Globex, most important thing going on was the Fed bar. So I'll cover it in a minute, but long story short, when you get a bar this big, it's usually is going to lead to more up. So if you know, spike pullback channel. So not really a surprise. We've been small pullback bull trend. Odds are we're going to get to the moving average. We'll probably eventually test this gap. When you have a tight channel like this, which is basically a small pullback bull trend on a higher time frame, very often the market has to go sideways for many bars before um, the bears can really do anything. So that's why tight channels, they give traders they're the second strongest form of a move of momentum other than a breakout. So here, I mean, this is in essence a breakout. However, the bar is so big that, you know, who really wants to, everybody knows there's going to be profit taking. So bulls will buy here knowing they can make 20 cents. And again, I'll cover all that in just a minute. And then they're going to take profit. So this is more of a profit taking bar and then a two legged pullback to 50%. And I'll cover that in a minute. So right now, uh, I am trading some of the Globex. I think we're going to retest these highs and we will probably, you know, I'm actually long and I scaled in and I'll buy more at the moving average and I'll take profits up here and I may go short. I haven't decided yet, but I have a target up here right now and just a fairly wide stop. I'm confident that we're going to stay in a trading range. You know, we may go a little bit lower, but I don't think we're going to just, I don't think we're just going to sell off real sharply at least in the meantime. So let me cover the uh, actual e-mini session. Okay, so here was the e-mini today. So starting with bar one, do a little session break to make it easier for y'all to see. Let me go ahead and show something real quick. I had to pause it. I was looking at a trade I was in. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. So you can see, um, very tight channel. Tight channels usually lead into trading ranges. And, you know, while I am still long, have a target at the high of this bar, I still think we'll get, I still think we'll go one or two ticks above. So that's the issue of, that's why bulls buy a tight channel. Even though it looks weak, they're so confident that we're at least going to go sideways. So even the person that buys here and buys more lower, they know they can get out of break even. There's plenty of time. But the, this is a sign, though, that the bears are, you know, the bulls are beginning to become less interested in buying up here. By, by the way, on another note, I am going to begin to trade more uh, in the evening as well, just because I have time to. And one of the things, so I will, I'm going to discuss the day. However, occasionally... I'm going to be pausing the video, stopping the recording, resuming the recording. So I may be talking about the e-mini, then go to the Globex and point something out with maybe a trade I'm in or something that's happening overall. And, you know, just like right now, one thing, everybody wants the moving average to get touched. So a lot of bulls don't want to sell. They don't want to buy up here. And this is what you're seeing right now. So the question on everybody's mind is just like this. So we're going to get a big bull bar and bad follow through. Here, I mean, it was two consecutive big bull bars, and you know, it, it was a bad sell. What's what'd be good for the bears is if the bears could get a bear bar closing when it's low. I still think it's you know, again, maybe four, you know, maybe forty percent. I doubt it. I think it's less than that. Uh, if, if number one, we haven't gone sideways for that many bars. Probably need to go sideways longer. That's a little bit of a surprise, and we haven't touched the moving average. Uh, and I think there'll be buyers down there and this is a lot of overlap uh, It'd be better for the bears if we go if we break above the high and turn down 
But if we close down here, closing on the sub, I'm going to be suspicious that we have not closed. We haven't gone above the highs, which would make me suspicious. So going back to the actual uh, E-mini, and again, you know, this is one of those things. Don't be shocked. Well, number one, that's an obvious target, just the body. And what I was going to say was don't be shocked if we get a uh, measured move of this bar. Order Nothing filled. Big. Let me pause this. Okay, sorry, I just went short. I sold. Uh, I sold a few ticks above, and this is what I was wanting to see. I'm going to scalp out for two points, which is somewhere my targets at 4125. Uh, but again, this was this was exactly what I was talking about. I, we needed to go above it, and you know, I, I just I don't think the bulls are going to be interested in buying when we haven't touched the moving average, and I think we're going to touch it. Um, so I may have to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this on the just continuous ES, con, uh, I'm trading the micros, but I'm going to keep this on the, uh, instead of the day session, the Globex, that way I can discuss the day session. So, you know, if I was going to trade the day session, just to be clear, I would trade just the day session. So when I say the day session, what I mean is, and everything, I generally discuss the day in terms of the E-mini. However, I trade the uh, micros just because they look identical and it's easier to use the E-mini. So, what I mean by that is I would trade the, I don't know what's going on with my computer, I would trade the at es.d, I would trade this session. So, but I'm going to talk about it in terms of the actual continuous so I can look at what I'm doing and kind of keep an eye on my uh, what I'm trading. So anyways, when you have a bar this big, you generally get a measured move up, which could be pretty high up. You know, 60 minute chart, we may go up there. Now my only, my only concern with that is the second leg up from here. And, and I mean, this is pretty climactic. So, you know, what we have possible three pushes up, one, two, three. Now here, this is a large gap from here to here. So we may find out that we get, this may be one, two, and then, you know, pull back three. Uh, not that great shape. This may have started over the count. So I think, I ultimately think we'll get one, pull back two, pull back three. Uh, but I think, I think we're going to get up here. And by the way, I don't like using session, you know, these session breaks. I don't like, I don't use that on my chart when I'm actually trading, but it's easier to point stuff out. So, and this is, what I'm talking about here, bears are going to sell, and mainly because they think we're going to get to the moving average, which is reasonable. So coming into today, and I'm going to ignore the Globex again. So even though we're looking at the Globex, where I'll I'll go ahead and do this. I'll go back and forth just so we can kind of get an idea. I've got my other computer, so it really doesn't matter. So bar one. I mean, look where we are first off. You know, we're in a just big old tight trading range. So first bar of the day is a doji, uh, which means sellers above, buyers below. And if we fall in general, actually, I would buy below bar one and scale in. Uh, just because when you think about it, if we fall below bar one, there's a high probability we're going to try to go above the high of bar one or have come really close to it. That means the breakout below bar one is probably going to fail. So a lot of traders, a uh, few options. You can buy, buy more lower. You can say you can wait and sit, wait for a doji and buy the close. Some traders will, you know, in fact, some traders will sell this close and scalp. So there's many ways you can scalp, and one way is not better than the other. It, it just depends on how you manage the scalps you're, you're in. But this day is not, this is not great for always in. Um, I mean, the bars are almost, I've almost got to do like this just to see a better idea of what the, you know, the bars. I wonder if I can fix the spacing actually. I don't know, I don't know how this, let me say, if I do like 20, it's a little bit better. So, I would not sell the clothes. I wouldn't sell here. If you buy, 
I, I, I would trade in limit orders. And my problem with that is, again, remember, trading range. You, you hear I'll say it all the time, buy low, sell high scalp. Buy low, sell high scalp. And whenever you see this price action, you should be, you know, that should be your motto of the day. In fact, I think it's the more people trade, um, I've shared this a few times, I'm, I'm scalping more now, uh, scalping and scaling in because, you know, eventually I've done it before. I've always been intrigued by it and event, you know, and I've spent a lot of time studying always in, but my issue with always in is it's usually not so clear. Uh, and it's clear at the end of it, you know, it's, it's always in short down here, but you go sideways and reverse. So if you sell down here, you're going to lose. If you buy up here, you're going to lose. And it's just not that great. Whereas, you know, it's most days are opposite days. You, if you look at this whole day, and by the way, it's a fed day. So you, there's, there's Al treats it as two days. Here's the first day, which by 11 o'clock, you shouldn't, I would not, I would just stop trading. Uh, well, I say that 12 o'clock, I'd stop trading. Uh, 11 o'clock, you got to be careful about scaling in just because you don't want to get trapped on a, you know, a deep pullback or something where you're, you know, you don't want to be uh, buying below bars, buying down here, confident we're going to get up, we're going to get back up here and then run out of time. Uh, you definitely don't want to trade during the Fed day, during the Fed bar. It's just, you can get a big move just like this. So this is two days. This is first day. This is hypothetically the second day. So, you know, this is a great limit order market, limit order market. And I'm not going to discuss a lot of limit orders right now, at least today. That's not the purpose, but uh, always in, I just wouldn't trade it. You know, I, I've tried many times. I've reviewed hundreds of days, thousands of days in my head about always in. And it's a great system. And you should really, scalpers use always in as kind of to base their trading. Uh, what I mean by that is simple. I find an example here. Okay, here's one. It's always in long gap up. Probably not a great bar to sell above because it's possible trend from the open. Big bar too, always in long. Okay, I'm better off buying below bars and scalping, or I'm, I'm real. I'm best off, you know, buying and swing trading because it's a swing trading market. But most days, that tells you something just how small the range was or how big this bar was. Most days are doing this, and they're just they're crummy. Therefore. I'm going to do anything. I one second. Okay, I had to manage that. I'm out of the, uh, the trade. I actually, uh, I like I said, I took my profit. I sold up here, got out. Uh, I may go long. Um, okay, I just bought a small piece at the market. I want to see how this bar closes. Okay, I'm, I'm still long. I want to see what the next bar look like. Looks like. Um, we're at the moving average and I'm not yet convinced. You know, this may be strong enough for a small second leg, but I'm not convinced that the bears have taken control. Uh, this could just be a sell vacuum of this trading range and we may go more sideways. Um, but you know, depending on the strength of this, you know, depending on how the next few bars play out, I may scalp out for a, uh, I put an arbor arbitrary target at the high. It's probably too far away. Uh, I'm, I'm more interested right now in just seeing, I want to see if we get a good stop entry, how this bar closes. So anyways, back to what I was saying. Kind of forgot, but treat the day uh, differently. This is a new day. The Fed, the Fed report. In general, in general, you just treat the whole day as one. Um, and by the way, even when I'm trading the Globex, I'm just looking at uh, the bars to the left. So if I'm if I'm trading at seven in the morning, tight channel, first first level fail, strong enough rally, you know, probably always in long. Um, trading range probably going to test these lows. So this is a trading range environment in the middle of the market, buy low, sell high scalp, strong enough breakout, follow through, probably a small second leg down. However, 
you know, this could be a the best looking bear bar late in the move, so probably exhaustion, and you know, there you go. So first first level failed, but the first first one went above this bar, so it's 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 I'm trying to kind of lose my train of thought for a second. My voice getting a little hoarse. It's a, it's a surprise bar, and what that means is the odds are you're going to get a second leg. However, when you get a surprise bar in a trading range, you often get something like this. It's kind of, it just, you know, jumbled up, if you will. You, you get the bear breakout and the follow-through bar, but yet you go above the bar, and then you retest the low, which meets the criteria of a second leg down. Bears get out of shorts. Bulls will buy, but you can see what happened. Bulls bought, scalped out. The bar got really big, and the bulls said, "Wow, I wasn't expecting. I was not expecting that. I'm gonna take a profit," and they did. And then you can. And this is pretty much the you know getting into the Fed. This may be the first Fed bar. Let's see. Actually, yes, yeah, so this was the first Fed bar, uh, right here. This little kind of doji. And this is, by the way, this is kind of the problem you get with you know. This is why. It's dangerous to trade the first couple bars of the Fed, of the Fed bar because look at this bar. This bar looks looks like you could buy above, put your stop below, and then price actually went uh, four points below the, this bar. And mind you, this bar was a decent sized bar. It was about about four points. So. Compared to the range, it was. And then, so anyways, and actually this is interesting. I believe if I'm correct, in the micros, so look at that. The micro contract actually went a little below and turned up. And the E-mini went way below and turned up. So a little discrepancy there. So I actually ended up, uh, I'm still long. I actually moved my target to the close of this bar. Uh, it's kind of, it's just coincidentally, it's two points. And uh, it's I think it's reasonable to get there. But I'm not sure if we'll get to a new high of the day. But I have a wide stop and I'm prepared to scale in lower. So I'm not too concerned about price pulling back. 